Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for your interest in taking a peek at my Canva file for my 2023 uh, Week in the Life um, six by eight album. So this is gonna be, a, a. am gonna try to keep it as brief as possible, but I do tend to talk a lot. So apologies if you are in for the long haul, um, but thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. I hope that by showing you what my Canva file looks like, maybe it gives you either an idea as to how to, you know, uh, set up your own multi-page document in Canva or set up a file like this um, for a larger project. I just hope that you get some type of tip or takeaway from what I'm about to share with you. So let's keep in mind that what works for me may not work for you. And um, this is one of the reasons I'm, I love Canva is because instead of having individual PSD files or Photoshop element files for each one of these single pages, um, I can have all of it together in a very um, clean workspace that is easily flipped through. I can look at it as a grid like I'm doing right now, or I can zoom into a single page and kind of scroll through it. Um, it makes exporting the files really easy. It's just, I really love having everybody, all the pages here together in one file, easily seen as a whole. Um, for me, that is one of the biggest parts to designing a cohesive project is being able to see all of its parts um, so that I can visualize what the whole is going to look like. So, all right, a um, couple things I want to point out before we get started is before I embarked on this project, the big question of what size album was I going to use? Um, I've done Week in the Life as a 9 by 12 um, pocket album project. I've done Week in the Life as a 10 by 8 album project, but I'd never done it as a 6 by 8. But um, I had seen for years Allie's wonderful 6 by 8 albums, but my biggest concern was not being able to include all of the photos and the stories that I wanted to include. I do not like bulky albums. I don't like a lot of dimension on my pages because they tend to lead to lots of bulk or bad distribution of bulk. So then your pages start getting all warpily or bent or, or they start curling around the binder rings. And I just really don't like that. So I wanted a album that I could max out with page protectors, get as many page protectors in it as possible so that I could house as many photos and stories from the week. Um, and I also wanted to come up with a formula. So what I did, I'm a planner and I'm a researcher. So I watched some of Allie's older videos where she did six by eight albums and I took notes and the things I focused on were um, formulas. What kind of page protector formula did she use each day? And then did she repeat it exactly the same each day for the seven days of that week? Did she, how did she vary it? Did she include inserts? Was it all page protectors? Um, so I made some notes. I figured out like a page count. Um, let's see. So for this particular one, I believe that the sweet spot for page number page, I'm sorry, page protector number was roughly 48 because I think that there's, if I remember correctly, seven page protector sheets for each day and there's seven days. So that's 48 plus there's some inserts in here that don't require page protectors. And then there's also a few pages in the very front that um, are, are like the introduction to the project. So they include my reason why, a, a little grid of this is us photos, and then a couple other random facts. So those aren't counted in that 48 page count. So looking at all of these, you know, albums that Ali did, I think I looked at a few other people like Jess Forrester. I love her style. It's very clean. It's very simple. It's very photo focused and she doesn't do a ton of embellishment. So I wanted to see like how many page protectors was she packing in an album? And what did that look like at the end of her project? Was it too bulky? Was it just right? So I did a little bit of research. So then once I did my research and once I kind of came up with my own 
game plan. I want to start with a six by eight page protector. And then I want to go to a, you know, a, a two up three by eight page protector. Once I figured out what my game plan was for page protectors, I developed a formula. And that formula was to represent the pages that were going to be used for one day. And in the meantime, while this is happening, Allie over on her blog has released while I'm developing this in my brain, um, Allie is releasing the the this week or the the week in the life um, products that are going to come to the shop and what's going to be available. So I'm looking at those products too, and I'm figuring out, okay, what am I going to want to use, and how am I going to want to go about this? All of these things, I'm trying to wrestle around in my brain to get a plan so that when Week in the Life document actually comes, I will have a page formula set up and I can start dropping in photos or I can start having an idea as to what I'm going to need to fill in the space. So I really loved the chipboard number inserts that had the little um, window at the top of them that Allie offered last year in the Week in the Life uh, collection. But I didn't, I didn't really love the colors. Um, so I bought them. And while I was playing with them and trying to figure out what I wanted to do, they're white on the back. And it was a, um, um, you know, there was like a coral, there was a mint green, I think. I think there was a, another color of pinkish or peach. Um, there were seven different colors and none of them I really loved. And none of them really went with what I thought our color schemes for the days would be. They just weren't really my colors. Let's just say that. Um, so I decided that I would cut off the three or the six hole punch section that actually made them just a direct insert into your album without any page protectors. I would trim them down so that they were three inches wide and could fit into a, a three by eight, two up page pocket, um, page protector pocket. I'm not quite sure the exact terminology for that, but we're going to call it two up because there's two of them, three by eight page protector. So it's a page protector that holds two three by eights. Okay. Or four, depending on how you want to look at it front and back. Okay. So side to side, it is two of them on this side and two on the other side. All right. So I decided that I would cut them down and I would slide them into there and that to deal with the, the color, I would make them black somehow. I didn't know if I was going to paint them black, if I was going to marker them black, if I was going to ink them black. I wasn't sure how I was going to make them black, but I wanted to make them black. So um, what I ended up doing was I ended up using stays on ink pad and I just laid out some butcher paper on my countertop, laid out all of these numbers and took a stays on ink pad and just smashed it on the top. I didn't do any, like, I literally just like padded it, pad, 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 no smearing because the smearing, because of the coating of the cardstock actually left kind of smear lines. So I just up and down padded my stays on ink pad on top of all of these number inserts and it got a little messy on the edges so I ended up inking the top portion on the back and covering the rest of it with a um a kind of like a, a journal card a custom journal card that I included the the day of the week and the temperature the high and kind of whether it was sunny or um partially cloudy or whatever. Um, and then a little bit of journaling. So that is a cut piece of paper that is on the top. Okay. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's take a peek at the, the file. So what you're looking at here, page one through, I think it's like 113. It's a lot page 113. So there are 113 Canva pages that went into my album. Okay, the rest of this file is, I like to insert a whole bunch of blank pages right here so that I can, at a glance, quickly see where my album ends and where my, like, playground of digital files begins. So, once I developed my daily formula, I created one whole day in Canva. And so, that would consist of um, page, let's see here, page seven through um, ba, 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 
page, no. Yep, page 24. So that is one whole day. Okay, this is a vellum insert printed on vellum and put in there. And this is the very last left-hand side page of Sunday. My week starts on Sunday, um, but you, it, this could easily be Monday for you. Okay, so once I got one day set up and I got all my page or my photo frames in there, I did all my design work. I figured out, you know, four by six page protectors, um, inserts, three by eight pages, inserts, three by four page protector. Um, once I did that one time, I then selected it like I have it selected right here. And I just went up here to the duplicate 18 pages um, button and I duplicated it. And then I duplicated it again. And I duplicated it so that I had seven days worth of that particular design formula. Okay. So that was my intent from the very beginning was to start with that formula for every single day. So I made a document that had seven sets of that setup. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Then what I started doing, because still at this point in time, I still did not have, um, week in the life hadn't started. So I was gathering things. I, so I went through all my files. I went through my stash, my digital stash, and I started collecting digital stamps that I thought would be appropriate to use or that I would want to use for this particular project. Um, and at the time in which the digitals became available, I went ahead and purchased them, the ones I thought I would use, and I dropped these in here as well. So here's what you can see, things I found, things that I had in my stash. Maybe I, I played around with like doing a page that looks like this. Um, these are all pieces that I thought that I would want to use and I wanted to have available to myself, um, to use in the album. It made it super easy so that when I actually felt inspired and I wanted to, you know, get down to designing and, and making pages, I didn't have to go searching for things. I had all these things available to me and, um, I just started plugging and playing and, and deciding like what I liked and what I didn't like. And there's a ton of stuff on here that I did not even use. And that's okay because, when this year's Week in the Life rolls around, what I might do is I might copy these pages, drop them into my new album, and maybe get rid of the things I did use this year, like I used a lot of these. Um, and maybe I'll get rid of them so that I don't use them again. I have zero problem using the same item multiple times in my memory keeping journey. But to kind of keep things fresh, maybe I start out without them and see if I can create something that I love. And if I can, awesome. But if I really feel like, oh man, you know what? Nothing says what our day looked like more than this, our day looked like this that I used last year and I got to use it. I just got to use it because there just really isn't anything better. Nothing else speaks to my day like that does. And then I will know I have to use it and I'll go and I'll open up this file and I'll grab it and I'll copy paste it into my other file. But I'm going to try maybe to do it without them and maybe use fresh stuff, new stuff, maybe stuff I collected here, but didn't actually use. Um, I also use this file as like a dumping ground for some text. Um, these are all little stories of um, memories that I don't have photos to match up with them. They're just little memories, um, different ways I was playing around with doing some layouts You'll find that a lot in, in the back of this file. Um, you'll also find early on, these are the colors. These little rectangles right here are the colors of those original page number inserts. And so what I was doing here in these couple of pages is once my day was, or my week was done. Oh, here they are. Uh, once my week was done, I went through and I selected what what Ali calls in, in the industry of design and, and marketing and all of this, people call it hero images. So what image is going to be my main focal image to open up each day? And so um, I went through all my photos from each day and I selected three different photos for each day that could possibly be my hero photo for that day. And I labeled them. I put the color swatch right here so that I could see, okay, if I did use these numbers, number inserts in the color in which they are currently 
this is what it would be. And what do I think about that? How do I like it? Can I live with that? Is that what I want for my album? So obviously the answer was no. And I ended up cutting off, like I said, the holes, painting these, or I'm sorry, not painting, using the stays on ink pad to um, ink them and get them to be black. Um, there is a post about this. It's very, it's not highly detailed or orient, you know, detail oriented. Um, I don't tell you how I did it exactly, but I do show you some photos. There are some, a couple posts along the way. Like I think I posted about this in the can scrapbook with Canva group. You can go back and see what I was thinking literally the day that I did it as opposed to months later. But the purpose of this is to see how I set up my album. Okay. So here we go. Let's see. Let's talk about this real quick. So what you see here is you are seeing a photo that was taken in my very dark living room um, with these very warm casting light bulbs with beige walls and no natural light. And my son is being active and so he's kind of, he's blurry. So right over here on the left-hand side is the original photo straight out of the camera. It came out of my DSLR no editing whatsoever. And it's just disgusting. So I took it into Canva. I did some photo editing to it. And uh, I actually may have edited it in Photoshop prior to putting it into Canva. Um, it's probably what I did because it's pretty, it's pretty heavily edited. Um, so this is the color edited version. And then I also created a black and white version. And I dropped them both in here so that I could determine which one I wanted to use. So oftentimes when like there's a really heavy color cast or it's just a really poor color kind of output from your, from your camera, whether it be because of the lighting or because of the lack of flash or whatever, um, I will do a color version and a black and white version and I will drop them both in my file. And then that way I can figure out what I want to use when the time comes. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, you do have options for your photos. You don't have to just deal with the colors um, and saturation that comes out of your camera. You can definitely edit it. Canva does have some editing capabilities when it comes to editing photographs, um, depending on your skill level and your, and your comfort level. Um, you might feel more comfortable editing it on a um, on Photoshop and then bringing it in or using a color correcting app on your phone and then bringing it in. Or you might be perfectly comfortable with Canva's photo editing tools and you might just do it right in there. It's completely up to you. Okay, so here is a phone grid that I created and this is using a phone frame from Canva. I just went over here to elements. I typed in here phone frame and several came up. So um, I dropped one on. I think this is literally the exact one. Um, I angled it the way that I wanted it. And then I just started duplicating it in this kind of grid pattern. And um, once I had the orientation that I liked, um, I just made sure the spacing was as consistent as possible between them. And I called it good. Okay, so just a couple of other things that I pulled in from other files um, to use in my album. So what you're seeing here is just a couple like mock-up pages that I started and I just really wasn't happy with, so I didn't end up using. Um, I did use that page that I had originally designed, but I really hated how um, blocky around the word quote it was. And, um, I had so much text that I wanted to, you know, include that I wanted to keep these little bullets so that I could visually see like where one story ended and one began. Um, but there wasn't enough space to, to add extra spacing. Um, I, when you change the different orientations of the paragraph, the bullets don't really change. So there were a lot of limitations to this area that I just really wasn't happy with. Um, so I did not use this like square quad setup for this. Um, 
I'll show you when we get to the page what I ended up using. But when I am using Canva and I'm designing pages, I and, I and I get to a point where I'm either unhappy with it or if I want to try something new, I never, ever just continue messing around on that page. I get to a point where I'm like, OK, I hate this. I don't want this, but I'm going to leave this because there might be something in this that is useful later. So I duplicate the page. You can just easily go up here to duplicate. You duplicate the page and then you rearrange this page. That way, your original page, whether you love it or hate it or whatever, feel indifferent about it, remains as it is currently. And then you don't have to remake it again. Um, so that's how I um, deal with kind of redesigning pages, things that either I'm not happy with or I want to explore some other ideas. I duplicate them and then I mess around with them. Okay, so these are other some other random ideas that I was, you know, messing around with as to how I would include digital elements and um, what would my intro page look like. These are page grid ideas back here that I could use in my pages or within my days. And then also, you know, some random cards. Okay, so let's go all the way to the top. And we will go kind of page by page. Um, and I'll talk about briefly, but still informatively about what we got here. So, all right. So this is a six by eight file. So the majority of what comes out of this file when I print it goes into page protectors for my album. Um, if you have seen pictures of my album, you know that this page right here is not in a page protector. I set it up like this because I like to see things as a whole. I have a whole nother file for outside the page protector printing. And um, let's see, let's see if we can just see that real quick. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, outside the page protector. Of course, because I'm looking for it, it's totally not gonna be here at all. Um, but it is where I have sized the pages to whatever the outside the page protector site. Oh, here we go. Uh, I've been in this file since Week in the Life and I've done other things. So there's other like random things in this file right now. Um, so let's get down to, here we go. Um, so you can see here is page 16 through 23 are the outside the page protector vellum pieces. I have pushed this text, this graphics over towards the right hand side with the intent that when I print this on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of vellum, I will then be hole punching on the left hand side. And I'm not a big fan of holes and, you know, encroaching upon any of my artwork. I don't mind it happening up here with a pattern, but I don't want holes coming through this. So as you can see, the words are pushed over to the right hand side, leaving a little bit of a left hand border for those holes. OK, so I didn't actually print these as six by eights and put them or print them on vellum and put them into my album. I printed from the other file to get them outside the page protector size. However, I placed them in this file so that I would be able to visually see what was happening and how my pages looked up against each other. All right, my reason why page, I created two different types of grids. As you can see, this grid has white in between each of the photos and no overlay. The photos that are at 100% uh, transparency, you can see right here that 100%, I did not screen any of them back to make them um, less saturated. Um, I just put them in a grid with a white border and did my reason why right here. Canva does not have a way to text wrap. So the way that this file or this text box text block is set up is it is center just or center center aligned. And I would type out a sentence. Um, and then I would hit return and then I would type out another sentence and I'd hit return and then I'd look at it. And if I felt like maybe somebody was too close to the edge right here, maybe I would go back and, you know, adjust my line. So there is a hard return at the end of every single one of these lines to force it into this shape. 
So that's what you have to do in Canva um, currently. Hopefully they will do the text wrap um, sometime in the future. That'd be really awesome. So again, playing around with the idea that maybe I want it to look a little bit different. I duplicated that page. I reduced the, I eliminated the white by just scooching everybody up against each other. And then I had to make them a little bit larger to go edge to edge. And then I added a black, as you can see, you can see I'm moving it right now. It is a black rectangle over the top at some type of opacity. Let's see, transparency of 20%. So I could darken it if I wanted it darker. I could, you know, delete it if I wanted it gone. But I liked the 20%. Um, it just kind of darkens the photos, pushes them kind of in the background. It really makes the reason why pop. I adjusted colors. You know, I did the exact opposite of what I did here. And uh, I uh, printed both of these. And then I had both of them in my hands so I could physically see which one I liked better. Um, and at this very moment, I can't tell you which one I used, but I used one of them. I, I liked them both. All right. So I always like to do some type of intro spread that has information about how old we are, what we currently look like, um, and where we like very basic information. So I include where my husband and I both work, which is the exact same place we worked at last year this time. And also what grade my children are in and what school they go to. It makes it very easy because, well, they go to the same school. Um, I created this little life with the Luthers a long time ago. Um, it goes on all of our Christmas cards and all kinds of other things. But then I just filled the space with kind of grids. I use the same pattern that I use throughout the album. One of the things I like to do is I like to have consistent elements shown up on multiple days, multiple pages, and it provides a sense of cohesion to your album. Um, so my main color scheme is black and white. I like the bold contrast that that lended. I liked that it kept the focus color wise on my photos. And um, this pattern paper is from, I think it's the photography story play kit um, from Allie's story play release. Um, and then these are just some random, um, digital words that I have used over the years. I think this pattern that this is us came from, um, I think it was like one of the week in the life prep days. Anyway, so, um, this is a phone collage that I did with screenshots throughout the week, just randomly throughout the week. I took a screenshot of what was, you know, on my phone and this page is representative of just a few of the things that I saw on my phone throughout the entire week, not any specific day. And I used this, this week kind of circle art to, to label that as, Hey, this is, this is information from the entire week as an overarching thing, not a specific day. All right. So then we enter into Sunday. Um, we use the Sunday, um, paper or the, it's a digital, gosh, I think it was a transparency that she sold in the shop. Um, and a Sunday word and the date for Sunday opened up with a six by eight full page, photo. I did not do any embellishing at all to this photo and I printed it as is. I did not add white borders to it, which I'm, I'm on and off again throughout the album. Some photos have white borders and some do not. And I really like the mix. Okay. So just a six by eight album. This is a six by eight page that, that uh, goes back to back with that photo. This page fluctuates throughout the entire album. It always has the same stuff on it, but the photo sometimes is larger. And maybe that's because the orientation of the photo, like the, the content of it requires that it be taller. Sometimes it's because I have less uh, words. So you're gonna see right here that it appears that I text wrapped around this circle. And all I did was put in spaces. So do you see all that right there? These are all spaces. So what I did to set up this page is I put my text box right here. I put my circle where I wanted it and the size in which I wanted it. I pasted in the text that I had saved in my Google document from the week, or I typed it up depending on how I got this information in here. I filled my text block with it and it is set to left just or left align, okay? And then once I got all my words in here, I did not even look at how it looked. I went to the very front of the first line and I used the space bar 
to push it until it got to where it needed to be. And I did that with every single line. So in order to get the second line, the third line, the fourth line to push, you have to do a return right here. And then you can push it. If you just start, if you just put your cursor on the next line and you start doing the space bar, it's not going to do anything. So you need to enter in that hard return at the end of the first or the previous um, line, or you can do it at the beginning of that line. There just needs to be a hard return and then start using the spaces and you'll manually do this. That's why it's really important to have your text completely done in the way that you want it before you do any of the alignment. The alignment, the fake text wrapping is the last thing that you should do on a page like this. Okay. Um, I told you that I was using the physical insert, the chipboard with the numbers, but I still really wanted to see how it would look mocked up in my album. So these numbers are frames. Um, I just went into elements and I typed in like number frame and I chose one that was kind of similar to the one that Allie used in her product. And um, I measured the window size in the card that I had physically at this point. Um, and I mocked up to the best of my ability, a very realistic three by eight spot so that I could size this photo accordingly um, so that this was an accurate representation of what everyone would look like proportion wise, okay? So I started out with three photos right here on this. The back side um, is just a two, two photo up grid. This is that um, little custom journal card that I told you that I created to cover up the white on the back side that is a little bit messy with ink. And um, then our next page here is a two up four by six page protector. Um, so this right here is printed as one, one four by six and that's another four by six. Then again, four by sixes. So that's a four by six. This is printed as a four by six with a big wide white border. And then you start coming into where I have inserts. I love adding horizontal photo inserts into my pages or into my albums um, because it gives you something tactile, something a little bit different to touch. And it also breaks up the pages and gives you an opportunity to have a bigger horizontal photo. Um, so these are sized to six inches wide by it looks like 4.3. So a roughly four and a quarter tall. You can print them out exactly like that and you can hole punch them and put them into your album. I used the page attachers that Allie used to sell in her shop. She's currently out of them. Um, but that way I did not end up hole punching at all. Um, and that was kind of what I wanted. Um, let's see. So that is two roughly six, six inches wide by four and a quarter tall inserts. They attach back to back with a page protector and, or with a page attacher and go directly into the album. Next thing that we have here is a three by eight insert. These print and then the Sunday text is on the back of the photos. Okay. So, and then I added like a little tab. Um, to the side, but this is a three by eight insert. It is not two up three by eight, just one. Okay. And then we have another random outside the page protector, six inches wide by four and a quarter tall photo insert with a um, little bit of journaling on the back of it. And again, this says this week, so this is around here information that covers not a specific day, rather the entire week. So I tried to be consistent with when I included things like this. If it was information from the day, then I tried to label it as the day. And if it was information from the week, I used this little this week icon right here. Okay, so this is the start of a four up three by four page protector set. Um, it has various photos as well as a... Um, Let's see, it has a journaling card, a consistent journaling card. So each day has the same journaling card. Um, it has this little kind of specialty card that I made. I think I did two of them, maybe three throughout the entire album. Um, and it just depended on what kind of information I wanted to put right there and what the amount of text I had. Um, and then there's this journaling card. This is more of like an embellishment base. 
So you'll see there's one of these for every single day. It's printed just like this as a four by six. I'm sorry, as a three by four. And then I added a physical vellum heart with a circle punched embellishment on top in this area right here. And so that was just a consistent embellishment that I used on every single day. Looks a little plain and boring in the album just because it's going to have some hybrid elements on it when it goes into the album. Okay, so again, here is an insert. There's another one. I created a kind of a special grid for this particular day because this was Mother's Day and I had I had some it, photos that I wanted to group together with a tiny little story. And then I ended each day with this kind of grid story collage. Um, each day has a different title here at the top, but every day has the eight photos. The center has that pattern paper. And on my physical page in my album, I added one of those vellum hearts with one of those, um, I created a little black word strip with the day. And so um, as it faces the next day, Monday, you can see that this is the end of Sunday because this has a vellum heart with a little black word strip that says Sunday. Okay, so now we're going into Monday. So it's the same type of thing. Okay, I didn't really vary the formula too much here. Um, still keeping it consistent. This, instead of being two photos, I just made it one because that's what I had that day. And that's what suited the need for documenting that. I had less four by sixes this day. So I used this area to add a little bit of text specifically about my daughter's love for reading. And this is a saying that I will never stop using because it's absolutely 100% accurate. Um, looking at this album compared with the album I did the year before, it's totally on point. And it's also on point again for this year. Um, things that were going on last year in my Weekend of Life album are absolutely not happening this year. And I will be using it again and I will be documenting kind of a this year versus last year style page as well. So it's one of my favorite quotes and I'm always going to use it. This is a two up four by six, same formula as before. You've got an insert. We've got a photo insert here. You probably see that throughout the album, I, there's a couple um, page elements that are consistent. So you have a cursive alley's handwriting word. You have a rectangle box and you have a, this is a word strip um, uh, from one of the, it's one of the week in the life files. So um, I did kind of a, a like a digital cluster uh, over top of some of the photos like this. And depending on how big or long the word was, I would just adjust the rectangle. But other than that, it was it was pretty consistent. Um, and then it also kind of reflects what the look of the header is for. Let's just go back up for a second. It mimics this look right here as well. So trying to create some consistency throughout my album um, so that the same digital elements kind of appear um, throughout. And so when I was creating that, I was looking at, okay, well, how can I apply it to here? And how can I apply it to here? And, and what makes the most sense? Um, and then is it, is it duplicatable? Can I, can I continue using it or do I have to modify it too much to where it's not the same? Um, so again, this is a three by eight and this is going to be one side of it. And this is going to be the other side. It's just a three by eight insert into the album. Another four up three by four. See, there's that same journal card for the day. Again, another insert. There's Again, that repetitive word kind of collage of elements, grouping of elements, six by eight photo to end the day. And then the last thing for that day is this um, grid um, glimpse at the day printed out. There's a vellum heart here and a word strip that says Monday. Okay, so then we go to Tuesday. Throughout this process, there were two days that had significantly less photos than the rest and one day that had significantly more. So as we're looking at these, we're going to see that I had to make some modifications to my 
daily formula. But because I started out with a daily formula, it took me less time to modify them than it would have to just create completely new pages for each day. So you'll see it's the same thing. We've continued looking on um, four by sixes because I, this one's a more square four by six. I decided to kind of give it a little white border over here and end cap it with some of that, um, that pattern paper that I use consistently throughout the other pages of the album. When it gets printed, there's a vellum heart right here with a little circle punch out. I think it says like real life or stuff I love, something like that. But it's, it's a consistent element used on other pages as well. Four by sixes. Um, here is an insert. Here's the back of the insert. There's that three by eight insert page protector. This is the front and this is the back side. I may have actually flip flopped them in real life. Um, so here we go, two four by sixes. So that is printed as one. And then this is printed as one four by six right here. And then down here, I did the same thing. I printed this entire section as one four by six and another four by six and slid them into a two up four by six page protector. Even though they look like these are two three by fours, it's really one four by six. So um, let's see, I did a some days and most days comparison. And I really loved doing this because I did a some days, I did a most days. And then with some of these I did today. Um, so um, it would, it allowed me to document more things, um, more details in a shorter way. So I love this some days and most days. Sorry, my phone has been rather noisy this entire time. So I apologize for all of its random little random beeps and boops and all of that. So it wants my attention, but all right. So again, the some days and most days, this is applying to the entire week. So again, I've got the this little this week um, element down here in the corner. And just the back of that is a photo insert. And then we're going to end that particular um, that particular set with that particular day with a six by eight photo. Now, I believe that either this insert or this six by eight photo, one of them does not have printed in real life, does not have this little like word collage grouping on it. Um, I couldn't decide which one I wanted it on. So I think that I printed it. I think I printed two versions um, and I'm pretty sure I went with the six by eight. I want to remember and with the black as opposed to the white I want to remember. And I don't have any problem um, using this. I want to remember multiple times throughout this album because isn't that the point of memory keeping is because you want to remember. I know it is for me. So what I would do is if I used this multiple times, I would just swap out the word phrase strip that I use right down here at the bottom. Um, instead of saying today went just like this, um, maybe it was like moments to remember or my favorite moments from today or whatever. There's lots of options. So you can, you can definitely, oh, see, I mean, even just between the two, there has two different ones. Okay. So six by eight full page photo. And then to end that day, I did the grid again with the little photos and the little tiny story captions. These are for what cat, uh, what Allie would call micro stories. It's perfect for including photos that are not perfect. Maybe the content isn't that exciting and, you know, but, but you still want to include it. And maybe it has a tiny little detail that you want to remember. So this is going to have that vellum and the little word strip for the day. Then we're going to start Wednesday, six by eight photo, six by eight photo with words and like the day uh, marker on there stuck with the three up right here. We did one super tall photo on the back here, adjusted that because that's what I had. Um, this is printed as two four by sixes and, or I'm sorry, one four by six right here and one four by six right here because I'm still using the two up four by six page protector. Um, but I wanted to give these two a little bit of space. So I added the little white border in between and I printed them as one whole four by six. And then this is printed as one four by six. Okay, and then we have the three by eight insert again. The four up three by fours. This is that 
kind of repeated style that I did earlier in the book. I just used it for different content this time, like what book she's reading, what book I'm reading, and how it kind of caught me off guard that the titles were so similar. And my book is completely inappropriate for an 11 year old to read. Um, so I wrote just a smidge about that and how this was just, it's just really interesting to me. So it was something I wanted to document. Um, let's see. All right. Here's again, that spot for my embellishment. We're going to call this my embellishment foundation printed it like that. And I want, I want to, I want to make sure that I also notate, this is a detail. Okay. This is something that I find really important and you can totally do it or you cannot do it. But anytime I made one of these, I moved the pattern paper around in this frame. So we're going to click on it and I would move it. Maybe I'd move it. Maybe I'd move it. Maybe I'd move it. I just moved it so that when I printed all seven of these, they were not exactly the same, that the pattern of the flowers shifts around in that space. Um, so that's just a little tidbit of one of the things that I did to where I feel like it's the little detail that makes it different. Okay, again, here is that daily journal card for three by four. Um, this is one of the six by eight pages I made. So this particular day, Wednesday, had less photos than any of my other days. I have two days like this, so I have less photos. So when I came to the back and I, you can see that this is the last page. This six by eight single full page photo is the last page of my day. And that does not follow along at all with the formula that I have set forth for myself. See this right here? This is supposed to be my last page. But that particular day, Wednesday, I didn't have enough photos for that. Um, you can see from here to here, these are my Wednesday photos. And a lot of them aren't even photos. Like I took this one. Um, these are screenshots of the day my bonus lesson became available on the Allie Edwards um, in her classroom. Uh, you know, so th those are exceptional things right there that I kind of went out of my way to include. Um, so this was an example of, I had to change my page formula. So what I chose to do was end it with a full page photo so that it would face this. I like the way that that looks. And then I created a, a, I want to remember page because I remembered seeing that Allie had included word art art for the hard parts, the easy parts, the awesome parts. And there's another one too, because remember I showed you that like four square grid that I had kind of played around with the design. So I think it was like the awesome and the good, or I don't know. Um, so I just kind of combined two of them and I've got three sections here. I like the way it lays out. Um, it's much more pleasing to the eye than having that like four square grid thing going on. And again, this is information from this week overall. Um, so I included the this week kind of digital element right there to tie that all together. So it's a, it's a great way to fill space on a page formula or a daily formula where you don't have enough photos to kind of do something like this. All right, so then we can go into Thursday. Thursday was also my other day that I had very few photos. It was a weird day for me because I went into work late and I worked late. So I did not take any photos in the evening time because I was not there. My husband took this one photo right here of my daughter, of course, getting the most giant ice cream in the world. And I took a photo that morning. Um, and you can see there just really isn't a ton of photos. So I took out the four the four up three by four page protectors. Um, there are no single photo inserts for this particular day. And this page right here, um, I created this page to include all of the conversations or just random things that I heard people say or that people were saying over the week. And so I had one piece of paper that I just randomly jotted down stuff. Um, I tried to make the quoted items, the large, bold words and include the um, small little bits of like supporting details as the italic um, text right here to kind of keep visual interest and also um, to 
to make sure that we understood who was saying that quote or what was going on when that was said. So conversations from this week is a six by eight insert um, or a six by eight that I did to go on the back of this grid from Thursday. So a lot of uh, random little photos, but definitely not a photo heavy day for me at all. Kind of out of the norm. All right, so then we go into Friday and my poor little baby was sick that day. So it totally threw me for a loop. Um, I was supposed to be at work that day, but I was not. And I was hung out at home uh, with my husband, my dog, and my sick kid. So my other kid, she went to school. So this, for some reason, was the hardest journaling to do. I still have a smidge of journaling left to do that I just need to put my thoughts into words and then I can print out this area. I can print out this page and I can print out the small three by four on the other page and the album will be officially done. So following the same formula though, right? So two, three by eight pocket page protectors. There is a three by eight insert. We've got the four by six um, pockets right here. This is printed as one four by six and this is one four by six. Um, I was short a four by six photo. So I used this spot down here to include those notes that I showed you earlier in the video, the memories without photos from the week. So these are just um, little tiny micro stories that I don't have any photos to pair with them. Or maybe they didn't fit on the pages where these things actually happened because I had a lot of journaling for there. So this is just one way that you can include some things that don't have any photos. So we've got insert. There's your outside the page protector, six inches wide by four and a quarter tall. Here are four um, two by threes. No, that's not right. Four three by fours page protectors. Um, this, the days are long, but the years are short. I did not print that when I printed this photo. That was something that I added after the fact. So I just set these up. I printed them on some cardstock. I cut them out by hand. I added them with some adhesive onto that little spot. Um, it, typically that happens. I print out, like this will be the three by four right here. I don't have anything right here. Maybe I leave it. The white space doesn't bother me. Maybe I add like a little embellishment slightly overlapping the bottom of this photo frame. Maybe I do something like this after the fact and I cut it and I stick it on. Um, but I don't hold up my printing of the photo because I'm not sure what I'm going to put down here because I know that regardless, even if I leave it in my album like this, I will be happy with it. And I'd rather have it in my album and pretty much done um, as opposed to letting it just sit in this file and not be printed. So um, I don't know what's going to happen here. I might just leave it the way it is. There's a lot going on on this page. So then we have an insert. I actually think I did two inserts back to back for this particular page. Um, I tried to stick with the same kind of styling that I had created for those other two journaling cards um, to create, add kind of like a little micro story right here, but keep the visual look of the others. A little photo collage to include all those photos. Did the black background here and some large type. I think that type is the same size as this type. So just add some visual consistency from page to page. Um, so that's an insert. And then we have a, another insert right after it. And so what I did in the album is I kind of offset them by about one ring. So I think that they're about a half of an inch. Like this one is about a half of an inch higher in the album than this one. So when they're laying on top of each other, I think you can see a little bit of this pattern and the other photo kind of pokes out the top. So they're not laying directly on top of each other. Um, I love this last year versus this year. This is a great comparison opportunity for, um, you know, collecting information that is significantly different or even just a little bit different. So we've had a lot of changes from last year to from last year, from the year before. Yeah. 2022 to 2023. And so this was a great opportunity to kind of document those. And again, I used the this week because this is information not for just one day. Um, again, remember you can use pattern paper to fill in uh, blank space on a card because clearly this photo, I 
it was a perfect square photo because do we need more of the garage door in the photo? No, but I totally could have printed um, the more of the garage door and not use the pattern paper, but this is much lovelier. So you can remember to be able to do that, to add like little color block kind of areas, but use pattern paper. I had a ton of photos that I wanted to use right here because the girls were just being so goofy and having so much fun. And you can really see their different personalities and they, the way they approach photos and having the, the camera pointed at their face. Um, so, and these girls, there are so many ups and downs with them. One minute they love each other, one minute they hate each other, one minute they're, you know, fiercely um, um, standing up for one another. So um, these girls are great. These are, these are cousins. So anyway, so I wanted to include them all because they were very representative of them at this time or that time in their life. Okay, so I created this as kind of a, a custom custom insert in place of the six by eight full page photo that would go onto this page. And then we're ending it again with this grid. And finally, we're on the last page. I, you know, I did say in the very beginning of this that I could not promise it was going to be quick. So let's see. Again, we start out with our six by eight photo. We go into that um, photo that I have with the photo on top, text on the bottom, the circle thing. And as you can see, the height of this photo is very different from the height of the first photo. I have less text and the photo just kind of warrants to be a little bit taller. Okay, so same type of thing right here as we've been doing. Um, I like visual alignment. So at first I had this smaller photo down here. Um, but I moved it up here because it kind of aligns right here with the bottom of this and the, you know, the top of this photo. Um, so these are design element things that I look at and I think about and I make decisions on um, when I'm creating the pages. This is a two up four by six spot. So this right here is printed as one four by six and this is one four by six. Same thing here, a four by six and a four by six. Okay, kept with that same three by eight insert. This is on the back, this is on the front. Um, this is a little collage insert, six inches wide by four and a quarter tall. And it's the back of this guy right here. Okay, this is a insert that is two three by fours on the front and two three by fours on the back. And so it's, you're only seeing two of these photos at one time. And then there's a little, um, uh, one of those Avery index tabs on the side. I found out that I, I just had just enough photos that I needed to add it, but I didn't have enough photos to warrant adding a full page, like four up three by four. Okay, because I already had that. You can see here, I'm even using like some space saving techniques by doing two photos that are similar um, as a little collage in one three by four space. So this is back to the four up three by four um, photo spot. And this is the other side of that. Again, here is that card. I chose to go with the black and white version of the photo. Um, there's already a lot of like very warm tones happening in these photos because this photo and this photo and and this photo down here, we're all taken at the same time in the same dark, weird, warm, tan colored room. Okay, so Saturdays are four. Um, this is a very vague statement about Saturdays at this time in our life. So not just that Saturday that was covered, but also the Saturdays of springtime, the Saturdays of early summer. These are things that happen on Saturdays consistently. Um, so, or at least were happening consistently at that time. And so I included the this week little image right there or the digital element to signify that these are not just, this is not everything that happened on this Saturday because that's crazy. Um, but these are consistent Saturday things. Um, this right here is a font that I was playing around with that might be a adequate substitute for Allie's handwriting. You may have seen that I am making this entire album, all 113 pages, into a purchasable Canva template for my Etsy shop. So I'm in the process currently of going through and either resetting the Saturdays R4 in a just a type font. Um, it'll probably be something blocky um, and condensed or also using the alternative cursive font because obviously I cannot include 
Allie's digital stamps in my file that I'm offering for sale. Um, I do have links to the stamps that I used that are still available. There's a ton that I've had in my in my stash for many, many years and that just are not available on Allie's shop anymore. So that's what this is for. This is, I was trying to figure out like what free font does Canva offer that would be an adequate, not the same, but adequate substitute for the Saturdays are for. So that's what that's about right there. Um, let's see, that's the back of that uh, insert. We're gonna finish this day off with a six by eight um, photo. And I believe in my printed version, I even included a vellum heart right here with a little um, word circle punch out. And the photo collage that I included on the rest of my pages, it also ends the album. So that is a very wordy, detailed look at what I put together for my six by eight 2023 week in the life album. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to, um, you can either message me directly or you can put a comment in the comments area. Um, I do plan on taking photographs of this entire album and including those photos on my Instagram page. Um, I also have already put some still shot photos, I think, up in one of the Facebook groups. Um, I'll probably include those as well. But um, this is a look at the Canva file to give you a good idea of what it looks like before it's printed and kind of the way that I set it up to, to be able to visualize it all together. So thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you uh, have any questions, don't feel... Uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me. All right. Bye guys.